I want to get into housing prices in areas that were seen as immune plunging, general housing prices plunging, commodities rocketing continually up. Bretton Woods 2 coming up next week, run by Soros at the Bretton Woods Hotel, openly calling for the end of the dollar. We're in a depression. All the economic indicators are there, but they're telling us that 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4. They're saying it equals whatever they want because, as Karl Rove said, they control reality. Well, as long as we bow down to these con artists and let them put their spell on us, they do. But the minute we realize they're pot-bellied scam artists, it's over. Now, bringing up Gerald Salente uh, to break this down and to give us his take on the war, all of it, uh, it's great to have you here with us, my friend. As, as we look at the war, it's what we had said it was going to be. The first great war of the 21st century has begun. And there could be no doubt about it. You said that two years ago. How did you know? Well, because the, the global Ponzi scheme is collapsing. What happened was when the bailout bubble, uh, the bailouts began in 2008, we said when the bailout bubble bursts, the next thing they'll do is take you to war. It's history repeating itself. The song is the same. The tune is different. Figure it out. 1929, the Panic of 08. The Great Depression the greatest recession. The only reason the recession hasn't turned worse in the United States is because of all of that digital money that they keep pumping into the system to keep the banks afloat. And then you look at the currency wars going on today. Hey, guess what? They went on back then. The next thing is trade wars and then real wars. So what we're looking at what's going on over in, um, in, in the Middle East and North Africa this is also going on actually in the UK. You just saw, what, a half a million people take to the streets last week. The only difference is back in the European countries, as they're getting shafted, they're still living under the illusion that they'll be able to change it at the ballot box. They still believe in that. But over in these other countries, when you have dictatorial, autocratic, or, or monarchs ruling, they know that the only chance is to overthrow that government. And the globalists, by increasing food prices via dollar devaluation, knew the rebellions were starting, so they started the dominoes going themselves to try to put their new people in. And now in Egypt, the new government has banned all protest. What do you make of this, Gerald Salente? Fox News, al-Qaeda leader dined at the Pentagon just months after 9-11 while he was on the most wanted list. Now Anwar al in the news saying Arab revolts a boost for al-Qaeda, that it's great what's happening in Libya, and the CIA-trained leader of the rebels admits the core of their troops are al-Qaeda. So how do they have it both ways? Al-Qaeda bad, give up all your rights or they'll get you in the night. They're hiding under every bridge. They're hiding in your closet, under your bed, under your table, your coffee table. But at the same time, al-Qaeda good. Look, am I an extremist that I don't like al-Qaeda? Are we wrong to not like al-Qaeda? Who is al-Qaeda? Well, according to General Petraeus, there are only, what, a hundred of them left in, in uh, Afghanistan. And what do we got? Over 100,000 troops over there. You talk about overkill. But, hey, they still can't find Osama bin Laden. No, they're going to use, you know the story, they keep using fear to keep the military-industrial complex alive. Look, I, you know, I just, I have to read this, Alex. I, unfortunately, I had to watch all of President Obama's speech the other night. Because I need to know you know every detail that they're talking about. It's very painful to watch this this show on the road. But here's what he said. I've made it clear that I will never hesitate to use our military swiftly, decisively, and unilaterally when necessary to defend our people, our homeland. So so far that's not too bad our allies and our core interests. Since when did this enter into the picture? So in, in effect, he's abrogated the Constitution. He's unilaterally decided that whenever he believes what a core interest is, like flourishing fields of broccoli in Libya, not their sweet crude oil, then it's a, 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 an excuse to intervene. Or our allies? What allies? Hey, how about that ally over there in Bahrain? You know, that guy that's killing his people? Don't talk about that one. Why not? Hey, couldn't be because the Fifth Fleet is there. Alex, they're getting us into war. The whys, the hows, and the ifs 
really don't make much of a difference because the story is going to change like that. How about this for a change of script really quick? Go back two weeks ago. Why did we get involved in Libya? I remember why. They said because the Arab League asked us. Oh, you mean the Arab Little League? Where are they? Oh, Qatar is sending a couple of airplanes. Qatar, hey, those are the people that own Al Jazeera, right? Yeah, that's right. And haven't they been fermenting this war in, in Libya? Yeah. And why? Hey, couldn't be because in all of the public eye, Gaddafi and the emir over there had it out at an Arab League meeting. So we're getting dragged into this stuff. And one more thing, and I want to make this really clear. You know how you hear all the time, you know, if only women were in charge, we wouldn't be going to war. I just read in the New York Times that toilet paper record, as they would say in the Bronx, that the three people pushing this war after the U.S. military didn't want to get into it in Libya were none other than Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, who's the national security, and Rice over there at the uh, ambassador to the U.N. These are the three women that pushed this war. So I'm tired of hearing this stuff that if only women were in charge. So when we're looking at this war, let's understand what it's really all about. It's about the same reason why we're in Afghanistan and in Iraq. All of the precious minerals and natural resources, pipeline routes through Afghanistan and Iraq sitting on what? The second largest oil reserves in the world. And it's the same thing for Libya. People could care less about Libya if it wasn't about the oil, just like they don't care. As we're speaking now, the hypocrisy cannot be clearer. 450 people killed in the Ivory Coast. A million, a million are fleeing their homes as a civil war is breaking out. Hey, Obama. How about those human rights? Well, kind of Gerald, out the door. Well, I mean, Gerald, look, the truth is bombing all of Libya, keeping the war going is going to exacerbate a humanitarian crisis. But 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 what about the Orwellian level of the resolution saying it's not a war? The Pentagon saying it's kinetic military action, the 2200 Marines, the thousands of British Marines, the Marine commander saying we're getting ready to go in on the ground, but it's going to be humanitarian. We're only going to be advisors helping with transportation, medicine, and giving weapons to them. So so now a bombing campaign is not a war. Uh, now uh, ground troops is not a war. And we're not even hearing about Fukushima, whose reactor number two went into full meltdown and melted out of its container down into the groundwater. Total Chernobyl now. And the government's saying nothing to worry about. I mean, this is incredible. Heil Obama. I mean, look, they just abrogated all our rights. Where's the people rising up and standing up? We just saw him on television saying he will do. There were 22 eyes in his speech. I ordered this. I want that. I believe this. Hey, whatever happened to we the people? And I don't want to upset anybody now, but I thought that was part of the whole deal. No, we the people don't count for anything. You have these megalomaniacs running the White House, running foreign policy, and, and running the world. Whether it's Sarko, the little American over there, that little weenie Cameron, that little... Uh, that little uh, Eaton boy over there in, in the UK. I'm sick and tired of these people getting us into war. If they want to, quote, take out Gaddafi, go do it, man to man, woman to woman. We could balance the budget, put it on pay per view. Everybody will love Let's it. Let's put a 50 pound pack on Hillary and let her with a parachute jump out of an airplane over, over Tripoli if she's such a commando. But, but, but going back to this, you're going to need a big parachute with another 50 pounds on that. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, Gerald, looking at this, uh, Obama, as you said, it's federal law. It's the Constitution. He had to get authorization from Congress. 
the, at least Bush got a, a, a resolution from Congress authorizing force. It was still an illegal criminal war. They've just dispensed with the Congress having any power, and the Congress is servile other than Ron Paul and Rand Paul and are just saying, great, we, we'll do whatever you say, uh, der Fuhrer. Yeah, uh, Kucinich also came out against it. But you're right. And then that's exactly what's going on. And then read Obama's statement. I'm sure you have it back from 2007, December, at the Boston Globe, when he was asked about uh, what are the, uh, the war powers. He act. said Congress should always be consulted, the American people. The president can't do this on his own. Biden said that he would impeach Bush if he attacked Iran without congressional authorization. But now it doesn't matter. And now a lot of these liberals, they are liking war right now. They're feeling powerful. <laughs> you know, that's, that was what I was going to say next. The wimpocrats are the worst. That kiss-eating grin and that balsamic smile, when their guy does it, it's okay. You know, it's all right when Obama does, does it, they'll make up any excuse. If Bush was in there now, they'd be bashing Bush. You know, they're more disgusting than anybody. My line is, conservatives believe liberals lie. You know, there are these wackos out there that say things like, we got to bomb Iran and get all them Muslims dead. I mean, they, people actually believe that. The liberals have the intellectual capacity to know that they're lying to themselves. They know the facts, but they don't because they're wimpocrats. They have no spine to admit that they've been had. And they're even more dangerous than the wackos because the wackos, you know, you can tell. But the liberals, you know, they pretend to be sane. Now, I want to get into some other areas, but you did on this show, I remember two years ago, say that by 2011 or so, it'll be clear that it's a depression, that then they'll start a new war as a distraction. What comes next then uh, in your historical crystal ball? We're concerned really about a, uh, whether it's a false flag or a real, a terrorist strike. Look, everybody knows that Gaddafi's, you know, he's a megalomaniac. He's been in power for 42 years. He said he's going to go out as a martyr. So maybe before he goes out, you know, how about a little dirty bomb for Paris or some biological And they'll love that. There that will legitimize the police state, legitimize the war in people's eyes. Or they could stage one and say he did it. And now they're reporting 160 Al-Qaeda nukes in America with no proof. Oh, yeah. You're like, they're all going to go off on, at, you know, Wednesday at 730 in the morning. You know, no, it's all this stuff, but they keep putting the fear card out there. But the reality, too, Alex, is the United States, the same day, the same day the United States bombed Libya, and the headline read, 25 dead in Libya, and it was a response from the Libyans killing people. 50 were killed over in Yemen. 38 from a, one of those predator drones, you know, the United States likes to send over in Pakistan that killed 38 innocent people? You think there's any hatred and revenge? How about what just happened again in Afghanistan? A number of civilians were wiped out. Little kids getting firewood, but that's humanitarian. That's humanitarian. Isn't it the hypocrisy? Uh, the, you talk about genocide. Anybody forget about what? The million people killed in Iraq by the United States? So what I'm saying is, there is a lot of legitimate cause for a lot of people to want to want to have a revenge attack on the United States. It doesn't have to be a false flag. The next war we're going to see is going to be one of new of suitcase sized nukes that we've been writing about for years and real weapons of mass destruction, biological warfare, dirty bombs. And it's going to go worldwide. We have crazy people leading us into war. And everyone is not, is, their lips are sealed and they're letting it happen. It's up to the people to stop this madness. Because you can't look to madmen to help you. And the madmen are in Congress. They're called the Republicans and the Democrats. You're right. Dennis Kucinich, a few of the Democrats, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, the only people saying, hey, you're supposed to get congressional approval 
you know, we're the other branch of government that makes these decisions and you execute. There's really no debate about that. I've seen a few editorials by conservatives and liberals and libertarians. And it's just so incredible. And as the tyranny expands, the, the bureaucrats get more and more wild as they get away with it. Yeah, you know, it, I, I don't know the answer. And I, you know, if I did, you know, you know. <laughs> so what I'm saying, everyone out there, put, you know, come up with the greatest ideas that you have. For example, what can we do collectively to say we're not going to pay X amount of our taxes that go to the military? I'll tell you what, stay there. Let's get into the economy. More trends forecasting straight ahead, Gerald. The New York Times was very proud of the bombardment of all of Serbia with DU. At least four times birth defects now in the country. They're bombing Libya with DU that has a four and a half billion year half-life and it's deadly. All of this is happening. And... Uh, Gerald Salente mentioned Samantha Power, the assistant to President Obama. She's Cass Sunstein's wife, the guy that says ban free speech in America publicly, publicly says arrest people that he doesn't agree with. Total tyrants. But they're liberal. And the DU is liberal when they drop it. She's not even American. I love Irish folks, but I'm not over there running their country. So many of these people running our government are foreigners. Uh, she's Irish, hadn't even lived here that long, and she's a warmonger. Uh, maybe they'll give her a uh, peace prize uh, because she drops DU on people, uh, Gerald. Yeah, well, she, well, look, I mean, Norway should be Orwell spelled backwards for giving Obama the peace prize. And, and what, talking about peace and Obama's stance when he made this speech, I want to read this. To brush aside America's responsibility as a leader, and more profoundly, our responsibilities to our fellow human beings under such circumstances, meaning Libya, would have been a betrayal of who we are. Some nations may be able to turn a blind eye to atrocities in other countries. The United States is different. Hey, how about to those atrocities going on over there in Saudi Arabia? And in Bahrain, now let's look at this. What if the Soviet, uh, Russia, Putin, decides that we're going to bring democracy to Saudi Arabia? We're going to give those women rights. They have none now. We're doing this because we're the great Russian people. How would Americans respond to that one? Well, that's how the new imperial invasion works. They fund the people to rise up. Uh, then, oh, we've got to go in and attack this country uh, because it's humanitarian grounds. I mean, this is so transparent what's happening. Yeah, but again, what would happen if Russia went into Saudi Arabia? What would happen if Russia had gone into Libya? Well, that's like preemptive war that Bush announced. Do other countries get to attack people first now? Uh, because everybody always knew the bad guys attack first. Now the good guys attack first. Well, does that mean everybody can attack their neighbor now? Does that mean Saddam was good for attacking Kuwait? Now, only America's good. We're the only ones that know good or no good. Now, I want to yeah, shift gears. Hypocrisy, as I said, you know, it's everywhere. It's, it's the facts are the facts. And the facts are that people are getting slaughtered all over the world. And when there's no money in it, nobody cares. Now, Gerald, we've only, um, we're going to have five more minutes with you in the next hour. Then we're going to your calls, those that are holding on the fact that it is public, that Al-Qaeda is being run by the U.S. government. But going back to you, Gerald, uh, here in the end of this segment, the next, the economy. What do you see happening there? Well, you just, you just read some of those housing statistics that came out. Well, the housing prices are down over 33%. That's worse than Great Depression levels. We're looking at we're, we're looking at volume that's going to last for years of empty homes. This isn't going anywhere. Uh, the, the only thing that's happened is, and again, you only go by the facts that this recovery was. They said it from the beginning was to save the too big to fails. They did it. The rich got richer and everybody else got poorer. This isn't, you know, a line. Let's look at the facts. 10% of the population controls 90% of all of the stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. 5% of the population controls 65% of all the wealth. You look at the numbers. Look at Christmas sales when they happen. 
Where was the big increase? The luxury items. The Ponzi scheme is collapsing. Madoff had an interview in New York Magazine in February 27th. Out of this whole piece of garbage, there were two lines worth listening. Stay there. Give us those Gerald, lines. I remember come back when we first started interviewing you about four years ago, you said the next big bubble to pop was education. Now, you were called, you know, paranoid then. Now the mainstream media, the big hot thing is admitting that it's a big scam, a ripoff. Nine die in Alabama hospital because of infected IV bags. Uh, hundreds of thousands die a year because of hospital problems bad drug interactions, but we've got to give all our rights up because the terrorist might attack us, but the real terrorist are the people that created the NASDAQ, like Bernie Madoff, but even a crook like him can tell the truth. Tell folks what he said. Well, he said two things that stuck in my mind. One was that he said, as soon as I got into the business, I learned right away, you had to be on the inside, and the game is rigged. The game is rigged. That's Bernie's words, and he should know. Gabish, it's rigged. It's a sucker's bet. Number two, and this goes back to where the economy is going, he said the government is one big Ponzi scheme. The king of Ponzi should know about a Ponzi scheme. And that's what this is. The global Ponzi scheme is collapsing. That's why you're seeing all of these revolts going on. And as I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. Look what's going on over in Europe with the European Monetary Union. Portugal's toast. Greek is, Greeks are cooked. Again, you, Tarpley, and countless other real economists, researchers, experts, years ago, named the countries, Greece, then Ireland, then Portugal, then Spain, then France, then Germany, then England, then the U.S., but instead, the bankers are posing as the saviors for the crisis that they've created. And now the headlines are EU collapsing exactly as we knew it would begin to. Exactly. So here's what they've done. Make this very simple. They keep pushing this money out to their buddies, as we saw with the, the uh, reporting from the one time reporting from Dodd Frank. And, and we found out $20 trillion worth of federal money. Here's the way it works. You're a bank. Here, Alex, here's $20 billion. Get it back out into the system. You can give me $20 billion? Yeah, don't worry about it. No interest. You're my pal. When do I pay you back? Don't worry about it. Just get that money out there. Keep the damn game going. And they give it to Germany. They give it to Switzerland. They give it to France. They give it to General Electric. And you saw those numbers that came out. How much tax did General Electric pay? You know, so this is what they're doing. They keep pushing this money, and the EU is doing the same thing. The Maastricht Agreement, it ain't worth nothing. Listen, I have an employee who gets paid decent money, has great credit, had a bank account with J.P. Morgan Chase for seven years. He went in to get a little car loan, and they were rude to him, and the banker told him, you get nothing. And the hundreds of billions they've gotten in the bailout money, it goes to their bonuses. And they've cut lending when they're supposed to loan it out. They're hoarding it all because the worse the economy gets, the more they can buy up everything. You got it. And you look at the merger and acquisition uh, 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 action going on now. It's increased. You know what I say. These guys are no more than money junkies. They can't get enough. And they want everything that you have. And, and they don't care if you're dying or you're dead. They're going to grab it from you. Look, what and talking about dying or dead, they want to increase now the, the retirement age till after you're dead. How's that? That'll work just fine. And by the way, in closing, fake conservatives all over talk radio say, don't do anything to the banks. They're free market. No, they're getting government welfare. They're running the government. And I'm so sick of these fake conservatives lying to their listeners and, 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 and saying the bankers are good. Oh, and how about this one? In talking about balancing the budget? Hey, yeah, let's start another war. We can, Detroit isn't worth anything anymore. Let's, you know, spend a couple of hundred million dollars a day on another losing war. Where are the conservatives there? Well said, trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch.com. Always great to have Gerald Salente on with us. God bless you, my friend. Look forward to speaking to you in the near future, trendsresearch.com.